time now to take a look at the morning papers and with us to review them are the political editor of the Sunday Mirror, Nigel Nelson, and the journalist and author, Gemma Forte. So a very good morning to both of you. Lovely to see you both. Um, so let's kick off, shall we, with The Guardian, Nigel. You've picked this out and it's really across the front pages as well as travel chaos, which we'll come on to, a lot of focus on this Tory leadership battle underway. And The Guardian focuses on what Liz Truss wants us to think about this weekend. Yes, and she wants to, to um, uh, advance the deadline for scrapping all EU laws. Uh, so th the result is we'll get rid of 2,400 of them in 15 months, which all sounds a bit reckless, really. Um, even the arch-Brexiteer Jacob Rees-Mogg thought that we couldn't do this before June, tw uh, June 2026. And the, the issue is, if you start actually getting rid of EU laws too quickly, you don't know what the unintended consequences might be. And there's a lot of stuff there on the environment, uh, employment law, that suddenly people could find themselves uh, not so much with a bonfire of red tape, but actually a bonfire of their rights. And the whole idea after Brexit was that we would incorporate all EU law into British law and gradually look at each, each particular one and then keep the ones we thought were uh, beneficial, get rid of the ones that got in the way. Now, that process could have taken as, as long as 10 years, and trying to rush it through could be very dodgy indeed. Well, a quick, quick thought on this from you, Gemma, because, I mean, Liz Truss's argument is that we don't want to be bogged down with bureaucracy. Uh, she wants to make sure that any, any regulation that hampers growth is get, got rid of sooner rather than later. But this whole idea that all of this legislation has taken years and years to formulate, which, by the way, we agreed to it. We were part of the EU. So she's trying to say that every single thing that comes out of the EU is toxic, which is just completely ridiculous. You know, some of it is just very basic, like Nigel was saying, sort of human rights and good legislation to keep things safe and to keep standards high and to protect the environment. They've just made so many civil servants redundant. And what are you left with if you just scrap everything? Everything that is holding together our already slightly fragile relationship with our biggest trading partner and our, and our neighbours. It is reckless, it's irresponsible, and it's pointless as well, rather than just going through individual legislation that perhaps, you know, we don't want to be a part of. But to just scrap it all? Well, weird. I'm, I'm sure she would say we'd only be scrapping the legislation that doesn't work for us, but I'm sure we'll get more details uh, throughout the day on that. But let's move on to Rishi Sunak's offering, uh, Gemma, shall we? This makes the front page of The Times. He's done an interview here. And the headline is that we're facing a national emergency. Yeah, so here he is setting out his stall. And I must say, it's actually a relief to hear one of them really talking about clearing the NHS backlog, which I think would be very high up on many people's list of priorities. He also talks about restoring order to borders and the fact that there's an economic emergency. I mean, he does also say, you know, essentially, government isn't working. It's at crisis level. And it's slightly galling. It's like, well, your party's been in for 12 years and you've been the Chancellor at Exchequer for the last two. So how much of that is, is, the, is your party culpable for? or are you complicit in? But that said, um, like I say, he's kind of seems to have a bit of an, an action plan. We have a six million wait, uh, waiting list. Yeah, six million people waiting uh, for the operations on the NHS. It is worth saying that before COVID, that was at four million. You know, unfortunately, with austerity, um, the NHS has, has, has got to a creaking point and was on the back foot prior to the pandemic. And again, that is massively satisfaction levels and value levels were at an all-time high in 2009-2010. So it's slightly galling, but if he's got a plan, that sounds good to me. OK, and we're going to hear more about that a little bit later. His speech in Grantham, obviously, at the birthplace of, of Margaret Thatcher, of course. Um, not a coincidence, I, I imagine. Uh, let's move on, though, shall we, uh, Nigel, to the Daily Mirror next, because a number of the papers focusing once again on travel chaos. It, each day throws up a different issue, whether it's the roads, the airports, and now the ports, of course. Um, the Daily Mirror tomorrow says holes chaos. Yeah, which is exactly what it is. I mean, what we're dealing with at the moment is a sort of a perfect storm of travel chaos. 
Um, so you've got the problems with Dover, where uh, the French didn't man the passport booths, uh, so only half of them actually remained open yesterday. Then you've got the problems at the airports, because uh, staff were got rid of during COVID, and there, aren't, there just aren't enough to get people off on their holidays. And on top of that, you get fuel protesters on the M4 um, and the M5, uh, which makes it difficult for people to get down to the West Country. I, I think, I, this is one of those things which I don't think we can blame the government for, that it's not their fault all these various things have happened. And at least Liz Truss is stepping in to try and get the French to man the border post properly. But given that we've, you know, it's the first time that people have really been able to get away since the pandemic, it is a very dis- depressing start to the, the holidays. And the as the REC are calling it, we've just had a frantic Friday and now we're, he- we're heading for a woeful weekend. Oh, that's, yeah, that, I know, it's, it's uh, terrible, isn't it, when people are, are so desperately keen to, to get a break, like, like you say. And it's picked up in the FT as well, isn't it, Gemma? Uh, they focus on the impact that Brexit has had. They say rows over post-Brexit border checks. I mean, th- the point they're making is that now you have to get your passport stamped, so that uh, requires um, a little bit more time, and there is, has been this problem acknowledged by the French that not enough of their officials turned up on time yesterday. Yes, and with all due respect, Nigel, I did think that was a rather glaring omission. The B word is a huge part of this. Um, You know, back in the day, you just were waved through. And in fact, at Dover, I've done it myself, they barely looked at anything. They just went, I'll go through. And you just drove through. And now every single person in every single one of those cars has to, as a result of us um, putting a hard border on, means you have to get checked and you have to have something stamped. So yes, they didn't have enough officials in every single booth, 100%. But this idea that that hasn't slowed things down is, is, is ridiculous. I'm glad that the Financial Times are telling it how it is. And you know, I've got to say, I've got to, I went to a clothes shop the other week and there were sort of 10 tills and only five had people behind them. That is really, really super frustrating when there's a massive queue. But yeah, to, to, to admit Brexit as being a cause. And until we start to, to say that out loud, then it, it can't be solved. And, and actually getting into more argy-bargy with the French and all of the, many of the front pages in Britain sort of blaming, putting all the faults at their door, it just isn't. What we need now is to make the best of things and diplomacy and to maybe not be engaging in this blaming when we we play such a big part in it ourselves. A a quick word on that, and and let's look at the Telegraph while we do that. Um, Nigel, uh, very, very briefly, um, Liz Truss coming out all guns blazing on this one. Yes, that's right. I, mean, I think that, that I mean, Jim is right. There is an element of Brexit involved in in, in all this. Um, but but even before Brexit, that there were we, we still had border controls because we weren't part of uh, Europe Schengen area. Uh, obviously, now that you need a need a stamp in your passport, that means everything takes quite, uh, twice as long. But I think that the that the okay. primary thing here okay. is many of the posts that are there would have been the best okay. would be the best way. I'm rushing you because we're out of time, but we'll see you next hour. Thanks both very much indeed.